Neil, we're now going to turn to the part of the interview that I've been calling my rapid fire questions. Are you ready to proceed? Can't wait. All right. <laughs> we'll start off with the softball. When did you first know you wanted to be an attorney? That's not a softball. That's like a hard question. I didn't choose this. It chose me. Uh, I, I really uh, w spent my time in college on the ball field uh, playing baseball, and my dreams were to be a professional baseball player. And I, I played at UCLA for several years, and uh, those dreams came to an end with injuries. And I'll never forget going to my father and asking for that father advice. Dad, what do I do now? And he said, well, you could always take three years of thinking about it and go to law school. <laughs> and so I did. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. Do you have a favorite attorney or a favorite firm to litigate against? No. I don't like any of them. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the first time we've heard that. I like that. That's a good answer. Look, my adversary is my adversary. And when I'm litigating, I'm at war. Um, I'm, I'm a gladiator. I'm at battle. And I don't think of my litigators as favorites to litigate against, although I do know which ones are uh, know their way around the block. And I obviously, like most big firm lawyers, prefer to litigate against people who know what they're doing. It's going to save time. It's going to save costs. We're going to get along better, um, you know. And so I, I prefer litigating against well-established, well rep, uh, reputable firms. In your opinion, what has been the biggest single change to the class action landscape over the previous five years? Uh, no question. Um, I mean, let me just say this. All litigators like to call themselves class action lawyers because their clients get sued in class actions and they want to handle the matter. They don't want to say, I can't do it, I got to refer it out. But there really is a cottage industry core group of folks that do this for a living and they do it every day and they've done it. And I consider myself, and I hope others do, as one of those type of lawyers. If you look historically back on class action litigation, this was always intended as just a procedural device to make it easy for people to get into court and make it easy for courts to manage big cases where people are affected similarly and they're affected the same way. And that is what gave rise to the legislature adopting Rule 23 and coming up with the requirements it did. The biggest change, in my view, is, is the requirement that courts do a rigorous analysis. Um, and what that means is looking at this not just as a procedural device, but a potential game changer in litigation, requiring judges to look at the merits. Um, look what's happened as a result of that. It's very seldom now where you have bifurcated discovery. Why would you? Because it's not just class cert discovery that you're dealing with, you're dealing with merits discovery. Recently, um, I litigated a case last year in front of Judge Forrest in the Southern District of New York where we had a mini trial at class certification, opening and closings, expert witnesses called, direct and cross-examination. I love it. I think it should be like that. That has not been the way it has been until recently. And so I think, uh, without question, requiring courts to do the rigorous analysis has been the biggest uh, sea change. What's your favorite legal movie? Well, I love all the legal movies, I got to tell you. And I know most of them are, are, are not real, but they're fun to watch. I mean, I, I like the, the Firm. I like the Grisham movies that, they've, uh, that have come from the books. Um, y you know, you, you get to... You get to watch other people uh, look at those movies and think it's a certain way that you know it isn't, but it's, it's fun to watch. Well, let me ask you a question special for you. What, what's your favorite baseball movie? That's a tough one. Um, I mean, Field of Dreams was great. I love that movie. Um, I love The Natural. Um, hard to pick a favorite baseball movie. Um, y you know, probably if I had to pick... I would, I would probably pick Field of Dreams. Mine happens to be Major League, but that's just me. I forgot. That's the one I was trying to think of. <laughs> Do you have 
any book that you've gifted more than other books in your career, either to associates or to friends or, you know, just something that you like to give as a book? It's a great question. I mean, two of my favorite books, not necessarily my all-time favorite books to read, but favorite books to buy and give away uh, are The Outsider. I think it's a great book that talks about what it takes to succeed. Uh, and another book that I really like is called The Alchemist. Uh, oh, Paul Coelho. Correct. Th those are two of my favorites. I probably butchered his name, right? <laughs> what was your least favorite law school class and why? Easy. Trust and Wills. Did not like Trust and Wills. Was it the role against perpetuities that got you? It was my fear of death. <laughs> 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 and having to, having to grapple with it through a legal cl class called Trust and Wills. Which of the following cases was worst for the plaintiff's bar? Carrera, Concepcion, Dukes, or the newest edition, Spokio? That's a real tough one. I mean, look, I would have said Concepcion, but look what the California Supreme Court is doing right now with Concepcion. In my opinion, they're just ignoring it and not following it. Um, I, if you look at a decision that came out just a couple of weeks ago, they basically said it's they don't have to follow it, and you look at, you know, you look at things on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I think the defense bar was uh, real happy about Spokio, but as, as you and I both know, um, the, the jury is still way out on the impact of Spokio, and I think district courts are all over the map on Spokio. So I'm not giving you, I'm doing what a good lawyer does and not giving you an answer. Sure. <laughs> um, because I really don't think there's a clear-cut one. If you had to identify um, an area within class action law, subclass, if you will, uh, that you consider to be the biggest growth area, what would that be? It's a really good question. Uh, you know, I think because of the world we're living in and the, the global economy uh, that confronts us and how everything now, we're in an information age, I think the, the future really is all around data and clouds and sharing of information and injuries to consumers that arise when personal information is, is taken from them and shared that's really hard to quantify. Um, wh whether it has to do with their credit history or information that you and I might regard as personal. Um, but how have I really been harmed? I just think that's going to continue to be a big area of future filings and, and case law. Is there a particular nonprofit or group of nonprofits where you spend a lot of your time? Yeah, yeah I do. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big supporter of AIDS Project Los Angeles uh, and, of course, BetSedic. I mean, I, I've been on the board of BetSedic for a number of years and spent a lot of time supporting the organization. Would you advise the next generation to go to law school? Well, I have two daughters that are in the next generation, and um, I, I would not have dissuaded them if they said that's what I want to do. Um, and I love the practice, and I think that our society needs lawyers. Um, but it's a very challenging profession. It, it's very time consuming. It's really hard to have a balanced life as a as a lawyer, um, whether you have your own practice or you're in a big firm, it's not for everyone. And I would just say that before you decide to go to law school, make sure that you're really in, in it and embracing it, because it, uh, it it it's very time consuming. In your opinion, what is the most beautiful courthouse in the United States? One of the nicest courthouses that I've been to is, uh, is in Delaware, the Delaware Chancery Courts. Uh, the area, the courts are just beautiful. You really um, feel like you're in a house of justice. And I think that's definitely one of the nicest ones. My last question would be if you had one piece of poignant advice to impart upon a young attorney, what would that one piece of advice be? Bring your A game at all times and only be yourself. Don't try and be someone else, um, but be a sponge. Uh, be there to absorb and learn. Uh, understand that in this day and age, the practice of law requires you not just to be a great lawyer, but a great person. 
uh, which means you've got to uh, spend your time not just uh, in the law firm, but out in the community, relationship building, letting people get to know you and getting to know them. That's great. Thank you very much, Neil. Yeah, thanks, Steve. It's great talking to you.